Welcome to Around the Peninsula. I'm Katusa Sergeant Chong Won-ho. Sports fans know that each team has a grueling rivalry. Very rarely do intense competitions lead to unity. Army Sergeant Golot Galgano takes you to Yongsan, where rivalry and harmony coexist. The Army-Navy flag football game has been an annual event in Yongsan for 15 years. This year, the home team Navy challenged the defending champions in the Army. The Army's quarterback, Sergeant Terry Williams, also has a history with the sport. Football has always been my favorite sport since I've been a child, so, you know, it's always feel good to come back to what I love. First of all, I love the, it brings out the competitiveness in everybody, and also it brings everybody together, you know, brings your team together as one, and then you get to work to one common goal, which is winning. It's the main thing I love about it. Fans of all ages endured biting winds and a temperature in the mid-20s to show their support. Interception! Let's go defense! The Army Interception! Go get them! Woo! The Army held a 14-0 lead for most of the game, but the Navy turned up the heat in the final minutes. In the end, the Army remained victorious 20-14. All the militaries, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, it, this is for everybody. This is not just for the Army and Navy, it's to bring everybody together. Though the fun of the game is for everybody, triumph is only for the winners. Uh, I, have a, I work with a Navy chief. He's not on the team, but he works in my office. Uh, he has this little button that says, go Navy, beat Army. So I try to rub it in his face as much as I can when I see him. <laughs> Army Sergeant Godot Galgano, Yongsan, Korea. Go Army! The Army versus Navy flag football game started in 1999, and it's one of the biggest annual sports events at Yongsan Garrison. The 75th United States Secretary of the Navy visits Chinhae Naval Base and speaks on important subjects for the service members. The auditorium on Chinhae Naval Base is silent as Secretary of the Navy Ray Mabus re-enlists six sailors. His trip to Korea focuses on the changes of the Navy and Marines in the near future. The audience receives a message from him about having enough resources in order to complete the mission that you have the platforms that you need. It's not just ships, it's also aircraft, it's weapon systems, it's weapons that we can, that you can do the jobs that we ask you to do day in, day out. Feedback is one of the important ways he is able to make changes in the Navy and Marines Second back in Washington, D.C. Airman First Class Devin Notstein, Thank you all again. Chinhe, Korea. Secretary Mabus heads back to the U.S. after visiting Korea's senior leadership. It's 20 degrees outside and a hurricane force wind blows your way. But instead of taking cover, you take it straight on. Army Private Joe Ellman tells us about the men and women who took on these conditions. Cold weather and high winds are a formula for miserable conditions. But for soldiers of 3-2 General Support Aviation Battalion and Marines from Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, they accepted the challenge to train in this environment. 3-2 General Support Aviation Battalion spent the day working hard and building cohesion with Marines. Marine Corporal Skipper from 2-9 Fox Company tells us about the training. Currently did LZ insert and now we're holding security, LZ security until get picked up by heroes again. It's part of training on a deployment at UDP. So far, it's been really good, getting a lot of ammo and training time and a lot more assets than we're used to, such as getting helos out of nowhere, working with the Army more, okay. you know, increase cohesion. As the day went into the night and the weather only got colder, complaints were never heard from the service men and women participating in the Winter Eagle training. Marine Corporal Guidry tells us the relationship built from working with soldiers. We've been doing a lot of stuff with the Army, working with the air assets, which we don't usually get to do. And you know, we spend a lot of time very close to each other, so you got to learn to you know, get used to being with everybody. But it's a good thing it's bringing everybody together. Soldiers of the 3-2 General Aviation Support Battalion and visiting Marines from Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, built a strong camaraderie during their training together during the Winter Eagle training exercise. Army Private Joe Lamont, Camp Mobile, Korea. The full mission training exercise lasted a full week and helped train hundreds of servicemen and women. Medics, saving lives is their job, no matter how that must be accomplished. Staff Sergeant Jao LeBourne takes us to a rare location for these medical professionals. Service before self, doing what's asked, not what you want. 
Call it in. We are selective armament personnel. My team consists of five individuals, and I'm the security team chief. We mainly just stay here and we take care of our facility. We do uh, perimeter sweeps of our area and maintain a defensive posture and engage forces as needed. I've been a dental lab tech for about 10 years now. It's arts and crafts, you gotta create things with your hands. So that in itself is rewarding. My mother was a chief in the Navy, um, aunts, uncles, grandparents, great grandparents, going all the way back before there was an Air Force. It's kind of a family tradition. Most of us all been in the medical career field. Correction, five individuals. Whether inside the hospital or outside, saving lives is the bottom line for these airmen. As medics, this typically isn't a role that we step into. Um, however, uh, with the training and the exercises here that we go through, um, I do feel that we would feel competent to be able to defend the base and defend the med group. Ready? One, two, three, three, go. We've trained together, we work together, um, we know each other fairly well, and I feel that contributes very well to, to the cause, and um, we kind of know what each other is going to do. Staff Sergeant Jaya Laborn, Kunsan Air Base, Korea. The Selective Armament Personnel course is three days long. An extreme makeover is underway for U.S. Army Garrison Humphreys, and history is in the making. Army Sergeant Matt Cromer gives us a bird's eye view on the construction project. Hi, I'm Sergeant Matt Cromer. As you can see behind me, this is all the construction that's going on here at Camp Humphreys for the transformation and the relocation. Right now we're at 50% complete. Uh, we progress about 2% per month in overall construction completion and we are, we are changing the skyline every day out here. In my time here, uh, we had very few vertical facilities. Now uh, we have a land of sky cranes and uh, tremendous progress. We'll be turning over a, a large portion of facilities in the 2015 time frame uh, with the remainder tailing off in the 2016. It's interesting because one, for one of the first times uh, ever in, in the history of the Army, we're, we're building a whole food and beverage plant from the ground up. So what we have is the opportunity to put together a comprehensive uh, assortment of services that include both uh, name brand activities like uh, restaurants that you might know from home. Originally, Camp Humphreys was 1,200 acres, but the program expanded to 3,500 acres. Given the land mass we would have, uh, we were able to save in, in excess of probably 10 years uh, with the processes we used. Um, we're right now, we're currently at 99% complete with the landfill process. So we have just a few uh, areas left of the new lands to complete the landfill on. I'd like to encourage everybody to understand that, that this thing is for real, that it's, uh, it's hit high gear now, and that uh, in, in the space of two years, which is a very short time, uh, we're going to see this place transform from a very small place to a, a, a large A-size garrison with tremendous services. Army Sergeant Matt Cromer, Camp Humphreys, Korea. The Far East Corps of Engineers began their first landfill process in 2006. Holiday traditions not only spread happiness, but also create a sense of belonging among family members. Specialist Marketa Gibson takes us to one of the most anticipated events in the community. Carols and laughter could be heard all through the Area 4 community as families and friends gathered together to celebrate the holiday season once again. Three, two, one, to the world. You know, this time of year, uh, there are many soldiers that uh, are spending time, this time of year, away from their families for the first time. So absolutely, uh, keeping these, uh, these traditions uh, that we have in, in the United States here with the soldiers gives them a sense of belonging and really a sense of home. So it's, it's extremely important. The tree lighting ceremony is a national Christmas tradition with a hundred year history. Since President Woodrow Wilson started it in 1913, decorating and lighting the public Christmas tree has been one of the biggest annual holiday traditions. Every president since Franklin D. Roosevelt has made formal remarks during the tree lighting ceremony. Specialist Marquita Gibson, Camp Carroll, Korea. The Camp Walker Chapel plans to maintain this tradition of tree lighting as well as have toy drive on December 23rd. That was your Around the Peninsula for Thursday, December 18th. From all of us at AFN, enjoy your evening.